interconnected? Are you friends? Yes. Yes, we're all friends. Yes. <laughs> and I met Laura how many years ago? Like, don't know. 15. Yeah, yeah. And I've always been a massive fan. And I work with Belle. And I think that, you know, they both have great individual style. And I'm just putting that out there straight away. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you should have said, actually, we're talking about the theme of today's talk is fashion and Hollywood. So obviously you guys are perfectly well placed to talk about that. Um, you each do something different. Um, Cher, you're a stylist. Laura, you're a designer. Belle, you're an actress. Um, but everything you do is integral to the delivery of the fashion message here. Um, so you create the clothes, you style them, and you wear them. Um, how much is the ecosystem here built on those relationships, you find? In, in Hollywood, specifically. Mm. I mean, yeah, it is. It's a smaller place don't you think yeah. and everyone kind of knows each other at fashion dinners it's I think it's a limited group yeah. for fashion out on the west coast and um, the community is more Hollywood based than design based which is kind of it's very nice mm -hmm. at least for Kate and I not to live in the system in in New York and it's helped us kind of stay on our own path um, it might be different for everybody but it's helped us at least mm -hmm. and then Working with stylists is always so exciting because they, you know, when you build a collection, you're always thinking your own narrative and your own story. But by the time it goes into the hands of a stylist, whether it's an editorial process or, uh, you know, with Hollywood celebrities or, you know, people that are buying the clothes, um, the experience becomes their own. And since fashion is such a personal expression, I feel like the benefits of that and the relationships you build are really, really strong and important. Speaking of narratives, what, I'm interested to know what brought each of you to this place. How did you end up here? You think you're from California? Yes. Aren't you? I'm from Northern California in a place called Aptos, outside of Santa Cruz. And it's, it's the, the place, if you've seen The Lost Boys, they filmed like the beach scenes at the beginning mm -hmm. in. And I remember reading at the time that Joel Schumacher said that he could only imagine shooting a teenage vampire story in Santa Cruz. <laughs> and it's very true. It's a, it was a very strong surf skate scene and um, very cool. So Kate and I always talked about how you were either sharks or otters there, if you had to describe your style as kids. Yeah. Unfortunately, we were otters, <laughs> and we were not cool. And we always picked the otter shirts at the Monterey Bay Aquarium, and um, it's followed us ever since. But I, I did always admire the style. You know, I saw my first mohawk when I was five at the movie theater scene, I, I think Moonstruck, you know, something like that. And so um, I just constantly had influences that were outside of maybe fashion design, but were more about people's personal style. Mm -hmm. Belle, you've been here just a few months, I guess. I'm not <laughs> from here. I might <laughs> be able to tell. Um, no, I'm from London, as is Cher. Um, I've been working here for like the last few months. I'm basically working here for six months a year at the moment for a job. Um, and we're both from London, which I think is why we work so well together, because we have the same influences and the yeah. same individuality, which I think comes so much with being from London. Mm. What about you? You've been here a bit longer. Yeah, like 16 years. Tell us like that about that, because you made it into a, a huge success. <laughs> um, but no, I came, <laughs> I came when I used to have a... I went to St. Martin's, I did design, and then I set up a menswear line and when I came out here like 15 years ago I just wanted to work for Stussy or like a surf band and I wanted to be in that yeah. beach environment with the cool mm -hmm. kids and that's what I really drew on about California so the fact that I ended up styling red carpet in Hollywood was is just the complete opposite to what I thought but it's it's been amazing and I've no regrets mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah Hollywood and fashion have always been intertwined in some way um, how do you personally see that interaction changing? I mean, you know, you've obviously, you said it, you thought it was through that surf culture, but ends up in red carpet. How do you personally interact with it? With um, what Hollywood and fashion? Yeah, that relationship. Well, I think I can only, like, when I first moved here, there was, there wasn't so much fashion. And there's not so many designers here now, but there is a lot more of a fashion presence in terms of stores, you know, Maxfield's mm -hmm. always been there, but there's the Balenciaga now. It's more, everything's a bit more accessible here. And 
designers from Europe, they want to come here and have their events here and they want a piece of the action because it's still this California dream, you know, and it's Hollywood at the same time. So I think it represents a lot of um, dreams for people from other places, whatever that is, whether it's Hollywood or this idea of California. Mm-hmm. But they, they work together. I think it, it works together really well. Yeah. yeah. Have you, in your experience, has that changed in terms of the fashion industry outside, how it responds to what's happening here in Hollywood over the years? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well it's definitely changed a lot. I mean, I grew up in Northern California. My mom introduced me to cinema very young, so we watched a lot of older films. Mm. And then, so Hitchcock was a big part of my understanding of costume design and Hollywood and the idea of fashion. And, you know, it was interesting because places like Vertigo were shot at places I used to go to. And, you know, I would know that area in San Francisco for the birds and different things I could connect to. And it's the same in L.A. because, you know, the street corner in Pasadena mm-hmm. is Michael Myers' house. Like, you know, you, you know the city through these locations in cinema. And I think because we responded so much to the visual styling of film, um, fashion just became a part of what Los Angeles is to us. So I never, never thought of L.A. as not being a fashion capital. It was just through high design through cinema. And so when I look at the history of that, it's really affected I probably everything we've ever done um, and it it rivaled you know New York it rivaled Paris and it, mm-hmm. it still does when you see incredible costumes in a film it's really a uh, very powerful thing that you never get out of your head mm. but people are recognizing it, I think a little bit more because when we first started and we said we were from LA people were like yeah, oh yeah. no <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. no yeah it, was, yeah it was you know but I think we were always like the little bit of the the pushback because it makes you fight harder, makes you believe more in what you stand for. And even when we met Anna Winter, our first collection here in Los Angeles, we asked her if we, she thought we should move to New York. And she said, you know, I think it's very personal for you what you make. So I would say no. Mm-hmm. And that's amazing coming from someone that was, you know, the head of New York, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. in the industry there. But you think that there's that, that certain snobbism that may have been there before has changed? Mm. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the red carpet is so powerful here now. It's almost yeah. Yeah. Be childish to yeah. ignore it. Yeah. I mean, there used to be such a divide between like people that worked on magazines and people that dressed celebrities, and yeah. now they're integrating. Yeah. Oh, really? yeah. Everybody wants a piece of the action. <laughs> <laughs> when you think of Hollywood and fashion, what are the images that stick in your mind? Um, important films, important images, key inspirations. Are there things that you return to on a regular basis? Belle, when you were growing up in... Shepherd's Bush when you're watching films <laughs> and going <laughs> like, <laughs> um, movies where the costume design is just so over the top like Mary Antoinette mm. movies like that that are just so inspiring and make you want to dress a certain way um, I just think that being an actor and being in the public eye and having a platform where you are going out and having mm. to like wear high fashion dresses on the carpet means you have some kind of like um duty almost to other women to showcase yourself in a certain way I think it would be very easy to like succumb to the societal pressures of looking a certain way and dressing a certain way but it's kind of cool to turn that on its head it's like what we were talking about earlier with Brodate like you guys are so original and like do you know you like never change or like succumb to those pressures and I think it's really important to like think that way and do you feel a responsibility beyond the films, beyond the red carpet, in terms of uh, social media presence? Yeah, definitely now. Give a certain image, yeah. When you have an Instagram following, yeah, you feel like you have a responsibility towards the people that are following you. And you can see, like, mm. you know how you can see in the stats and stuff? I looked at mine once, and it's like, all women ages, <laughs> like, 18 to 21. <laughs> and I was like, Amazing. wow, that's like, you know, people that I want to... I'm, I'm inspired by women who are older than me. I want to inspire younger women. So if you do feel like I have to put out a certain yeah. vibe that doesn't make people feel bad, that makes people feel good about themselves. Mm. And yeah. that comes with fashion and, like, dressing how you want to and not ha- wearing certain silhouettes because you feel like you have to or, like, not squeezing yourself into a square but you're a circle, just being yourself. Mm. Social media is a massive part of fashion out here, and, and that is something that has changed things a lot, whether it's, you know, the Kardashians or 
um, Gigi Hadid, going out to a club here, um, or like you said, being able to show more of yourself on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, how do you guys use social media? Well, I wasn't in LA when the Rodato show was going on, so I was straight away on Instagram, and I was looking oh, yeah. at it through your stylist eyes, I was looking through your, you know, you guys' eyes, and just trying to piece so much information together about the show. So I felt like I was there, and I almost yeah. did, you know. I could see it from every angle, which I think is amazing. That's, that's why I like Instagram. Also for good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the good parts. Yeah. What are the not good parts? The I've Discover page. <laughs> that's when you go into that like Instagram hole and then you come out 20 minutes later for air and you're like what have I been doing all this time um, yeah I think it's important not to go on too much yeah or I feel like it listens to you someone told me if the app is on and you haven't closed it out mm. it listens to you it so does. that's the thing so if you're talking about something it'll come up in your feed as an ad oh that was the scary oh, really? part for me yeah, yeah. that's terrifying <laughs> I don't know if that's true, but <laughs> I'm making an assumption. I think it is true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> what about other, um, when you're working on collections, do you think of film at all? Um, do you look at, do you yeah. go back to images? You mentioned Hitchcock, Marnie. I think, uh, gosh, there were so many collections. We've, on some level, all of our collections have been inspired by California. So that was the number one thing that inched its way into what we do. Um, and another one was, is film. And I can think of collections we did a, a collection based on ballet films in Suspiria and um, Japanese horror films together and that was what made us do Cautions for Black Swan. So there's things that um, kind of were in our wheelhouse that carried on into other parts of our careers and uh, the collection we did in Paris for Spring 18 that was inspired by the women, I mean the film Three Women, which I love the costumes for and I associate so much high design with the, the way that they built this world um, using co the color palette of the costumes and the narrative of that. So um, I could probably think of a film for every, every. Mm -hmm. Our last collection had all that jazz and mm -hmm. earlier musicals in there too. Cher, mm. you must refer, do you, what your clients, do they say, I want to look like this actress in this movie? Mm. <laughs> probably not. On, for, I think for the red carpet, you it would be hard to sort of reference a movie because then you'd feel like you were in a costume on the carpet. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so what's the difference? But then I do also feel like that does influence what we do yeah. sometimes. Like, I just did a movie that was set in the 80s. Oh, yeah. I mean, and at the premiere, we were like, let's go 80s. Yeah. Like, why not? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because it's like there's a theme created through yeah. my yeah. work and your work together. Yeah. I think you find inspiration in so many places as well. You could see someone walk down the street and be like, oh wow, it's amazing they put those two colours together. That's really cool. Um, but yeah, film's obviously really vital. And I love seeing when, you know, like you were talking about um, the Sofia Coppola film, mm -hmm. which was so about costume and stuff as well. Or when designers like Prada work with that movie, was it I Am Love? Yeah. They I think did that all was the Jill was it Sanders? Oh. Yeah, Jill, yeah, Jill Sander. <laughs> was it Raph? Yeah. yeah. But that was, I mean, that's that incredible. Was like, with all these worlds merged like that, it is, yeah, it is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and that's an interesting point, what you were saying, that what is the difference between costume and a real in, in real life clothing? Mm -hmm. What, for, for, for you, when you're working with a client and you have to, what, what's the difference? What you mean on the carpet? Yeah, yeah. What, what pushes something? What, what pushes an outfit over the edge into costume? Mm -hmm. Probably what I found doesn't work so well is, is too many accessories. Unless it really suits that person. And I love accessories, do you know what I mean? <laughs> but it has to really... I think whatever you do just has to suit the person wearing it. It has to be believable. Because when they suddenly look like they have been overly styled yeah. or not like they would really ever wear it, that's when it goes wrong for me. It just has to be an extension of who they are and whatever they're into. And you have to listen to the person. Well, <laughs> 80s, there you go. Yeah. And also, I have to listen to you. And yeah. that's what's such amazing about having a relationship with a stylist is that she'll push me in directions that I didn't think would suit me or that I could go or that I didn't feel brave enough to wear. Yeah. And it should be fun at this point on the red carpet. 
it should be fun because everything's been done pretty much. So you've got to draw from yourself and what you really like and brands that you really like and, and stay mm. strong with it but have fun with it. What about this um, thing that's so famous out here, the fashion police and the tyranny of it? How much do you, pressure do you feel to appear on those best dressed lists and not appear on the worst dressed lists? I think list? it's kind of cool to have both. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> to like have yeah. an outfit that really polarizes people. Yeah. yeah. But you're like on the worst dressed list and the best dressed. Yeah. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> it's subjective. Yeah. It is. And it's like one person likes one thing and another likes the other. And, and to be honest, I've always said, you know, people were at one point like, but what if someone else wears it after me and it's who wore it best? I'm like, yeah, but that's in a weekly magazine that disappears. No one's going to remember that, but they're going to remember how amazing you looked in that dress at that time. And also yeah. you're going to remember how you felt. Yeah. I think we put so much on all, how, what's, how's everyone receiving me? What do I look like? What about just like how you feel? Like, yeah. it's scary, like going on a red carpet in a big ball gown and like standing there and posing and stuff. I think... You have to like look inwards and be like, do I feel great? If you feel great, then yeah. awesome. I can't listen wow. to all the voices. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll just drive you crazy. Yeah. I'm sure you feel that about like I, reviews I, and all that stuff. I didn't, I stopped reading reviews of things that we do a long time ago, just yeah. for sanity's purpose. Yeah. And, um, but I also think, interestingly enough, red carpets changed a lot mm. since when we first started. It was very conservative. Yes. And now yeah. people will wear the most amazing high fashion. Mm -hmm. And so as a, from a fashion designer's perspective, it's more, so much more fun. Mm. And, the, you know, the world and the viewership is getting more accepting of high design choices that might not be, you know, mass market, but are yeah. pushing ideas forward. And I guess the more accustomed you get to seeing things that are new to you, just the better off you are. I always, when we're working, Kate and I always have this joke that if one of us that has, says an idea and if someone says no immediately, then you have to really look at it and yeah, say, yeah. oh, wait, you said no too fast. Yeah. So that usually means it's a little too new in your mind and you should talk about it more. Interesting. And then Time's Up, Me Too, Black Lives Matter, all, the, all of these things have had huge impacts on the fashion industry recently. How have you personally noticed that change in your work? Um, I mean, it just, it's just awareness, isn't it, of things going on. But I mean, I don't think it really influenced what I'd make someone wear, other than if, when it was the Oscars and everyone had to wear a dark color to respect what was being going on. But I mean, I don't really think it's in. I'm, I think it's just important in all yeah. industries for people to hear Be voices aware. that aren't your own. Yeah. And the inclusivity is very important. And it's everyone's responsibility to make an effort and to say, um, I want to hear voices that are new. And it's happening in cinema. It's happening mm -hmm. in fashion. And it's going to, uh, you know, people always want to say, what's going to change about the digital era? What's going to drive our culture forward? And I think the effect that we'll see is that you know, stories that we haven't heard are going to come to the forefront, and that's mm -hmm. very exciting in, in every industry. And just mm -hmm. myself being a, sorry, being a female designer, um, our experiences vary. We're in a very small minority of people working and running companies, mm -hmm. um, leading, leading businesses as designers or as um, businesswomen. Um, and same, we directed a film, and that is like an obscene percentage per year. So I think those opportunities and really talking about them and, and when, when you do have them, to realize that the huge, the gift you've been given, because so many people can't do those things. So um, I don't know who did that. <laughs> yeah. Belle, do you feel as an actress and who's somebody, as a person on display, yeah. in words, do you feel like you're not under so much pressure, pressure as you may have been at one time where things are more revealing or sexy. That's what I was actually about to say. I feel like self-expression mm. is much more celebrated now and it does feel like there's less judgment and it feels like that kind of sexist vernacular that used to be around in the tabloids and mm. magazines and stuff is kind of filtering out a bit. Mm. People are more careful of that, the way they talk about women and describe women. Mm. Do you have young women contacting you through social media and asking you for advice or other actresses asking you for, for is, there, is there some sort of um, network? I don't know if I'm like at the giving advice point in my career <laughs> yet. Um, 
but it does definitely feel like there's a network. It feels like there's this like undercurrent of like all women right now like holding their hands, each other's hands, yeah. being like, "You've got this." Like you feel incredibly supported right now. Mm. Definitely. Mm. Um, outside of the film industry, with regards to Hollywood, um, what do you see happening here that you find inspiring in terms of fashion? Whether it's walking around and noticing different style tribes, or maybe new boutiques, or unusual things that you don't see in the rest of the world. The vintage is amazing. Huh? Oh yeah, it's nice. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool. I always think of LA as a, a place that you know people come to. So you know, it's the idea of going left is always you know maybe seems very in your mind seems like a very a natural way to move so going to this left coast and and having new ideas it seems like some type of way forward and um but the industries here so it, it's like this mm -hmm. big convergence of industries you know los angeles had the practical arts movement and you had the uh, uh, aerospace industries and you have hollywood and you have the huge art industry here and um all these things piled up making one city so the communities are really interesting and so many new ways of thinking happen here and I always feel that there's a seed of calm that rests over the city and allows you to feel like you're not really thinking at a high level but you are mm. um, because it's naturally relaxing to be in the sun and to have nature around you and to have this open kind of sky everywhere but um, I feel like the city is pretty powerful and and who um, has expression and who uses that. Mm. Which, what, what makes the vintage fashion here so good? Where are you? It just, I don't know where it all comes from, but I think it's just the West Coast. Palm Springs. Yeah, Palm Springs. <laughs> like, yeah, probably yeah. where all these, because it always has been such a magnet for yeah. the industry and retirement and, you know, like fabulous. Glamorous. Glamorous. <laughs> we used to find really good vintage in Bakersfield. Like we would oh. go up and down the five to Berkeley and so be like, let's go to Bakersfield. They have great stuff. Yeah. So I think anywhere in California probably has good vintage mm. finds. And the costume houses are incredible as well. Have you been to Palace? Costume? Yeah. <gasps> it's amazing. So fun. That is all the old film stock oh, wow. from the movies and stuff. And the collection is incredible. So then you'll get designers will come over from Paris and stuff and be like, where, you know, they always want to know, where can we go vintage shopping? And I'm like, okay, go to Paris, because you will really <laughs> love it in there. And can you borrow stuff from there, or is it more just a research? Research. Oh, do you cool. And borrowing. Can, can anyone mm. go in, or do you need special dispensations? Mm, I think you need a bit yeah. of a reason, because they, you know, they, otherwise anyone could go in and just buy it and yeah. not return wow. it. But there are big vintage fairs here as well, like um, A Current Affair. Mm -hmm. That's really great as well. Because it's lots of independent vintage stores that all come together in one place, which is fantastic. Mm. Good tip. Um, finally, um, before we go out to the audience to ask some questions, how do you see things evolving here? over the coming years, especially with regards to the red carpet, because I feel like that's what you guys are really close to here. Yeah. I think it's just becoming, it's just more of a magnet, isn't it? Everyone yeah. wants a piece of the action, whether it's architecture or art or fashion. Yeah. I think it's going to get stronger and stronger. I think, um, you know, the red carpet's glamorous to people. Mm. I think that's the general uh, appeal of it. It's fun to see people dressed very well and visually that can be exciting if it's, you know, someone that you are a fan of or um, if you like the film they're promoting or the TV show. So it's kind of just, it's definitely uh, an escape for a lot of people. It's, it's, but it happens so often that it keeps this, fee this feed going, like this fuel of imagery. And um, I think it, it's just, I think it's fun. Yeah. I think it's fun for people. Yeah, it is. And there's space for everyone as well. So yeah. You, yeah. You know, as soon as you get off the plane from England, you're like, oh, I can breathe. <laughs> space. I can walk with bigger steps. Yeah. And I think it's also opens up creative. Maybe becoming like less gender stereotypical. I feel like a few years ago, if a woman wanted to wear a suit on mm -hmm. the carpet, like that wasn't cool. And like, did you see um, at the Harry Potter premiere when Ezra Miller like wore that incredible mm. kind of like, yeah. was it Moncler like gown thing? I feel yeah. like that's like way more acceptable now. So we're moving in a direction where there's like just less stereotype. Yeah. yeah. It's really interesting. Thank less you. Rules. 
Let's roll. Smash Let's the rules. rules. Smash the rules. Yeah. Um, I think we're going to go to questions now. So does anybody have a question for Cher, Belle, or Laura? Yeah. We're just going to hand you a mic to ask the question. Oh. And thank you. Good morning. Um, my name is Rosie, and I work in the music industry. I was just wondering if any of you saw the um, outfit that Cardi B wore on the red carpet during the Grammys, and if you did, what was your opinion? Oh yeah, that's yeah. famous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Moon glare. That's iconic that. look. Yeah. yeah, that was I think from 1995, yeah. something like that. Like and it was the f it's from the famous show that he did with, I think the robot suit. Yeah. So, and he has an exhibit starting in Montreal. I could be wrong about that, but it's going to be like the Gautier oh. one. So I think it's really exciting. It's cool to see how forward fashion was. That was. What's ninety? That's like yeah. twenty-three years ago, so it's pretty inspiring that someone would, and that they would pull it out of the archive. Yeah, amazing. That was what was a big deal. So they must have been really yeah. thrilled to have a moment like that. And you kind of want that from pop stars. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Want, they like, really push the button. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just want them to be so individual and go for it. Because I grew up with, you know, in the eighties with all those bands that would like get themselves ready and do their makeup, yeah. and they were just it was all self-expression. And that's has a lot of self-expression. Yeah. <laughs> Both for Cardi B, it's also her wanting to align herself with her. Yeah. But to stake her claim as a fashion, mm -hmm. as, a, as, a, as a force to be reckoned with in the fashion industry. Yeah. 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 Any more questions? Yeah. Hi. We're just give you the, can we just give you the mic? Oh, sure. Okay, I'm just like, Marie Viola from New York. Hello. Oh. Hi. How do you balance, sure, how do you balance um, creating a work of art with wearability? Because I see so much today that is magnificently beautiful, but very difficult to wear, I would think. So how do you deal with that problem? If, or is it even a problem for you? Well, I think you guys do it really well. I hope so. You do. <laughs> I, mean. I, I think it's, um, wearability is so subjective. So it, it starts from the point of what you, you know, where is a designer wanting to come from? Maybe your ideas aren't so mass. And maybe it's you know attracted yeah, attractive to a group of artistically minded people, and you know self-expression is a huge part of fashion. And always, if you look at the different movements within music and subcultures, you know fashion is a kind of a stamp of saying who you are. So it's nice to be able to differentiate yourself from other people. I think that's what we do naturally. Um, so. Wearability is always a question for me. Like, well, I don't know what that means because does it mean it's just easy to put on in the morning, or does it mean that no one's going to be dressed like you, or is it, does it mean that you're going to look like everyone else? So I just think it's a question of if the designer feels like it's wearable, then it is because mm, there's yeah. probably an audience for it. Um, and then sometimes as a designer, you might push the boundaries and do things that maybe one person might wear because it's so difficult to sit in. Or, you know, if you look at the old LeMay dresses in old Hollywood films, those women couldn't, st they couldn't sit. So they're always leaning on something. Because <laughs> the dress would get ruined. So, you know, there's always something that's hard about high fashion. But um, I think it, that you can find a balance. Yeah. yeah. But you can always ride to the red carpet in a van. Where you can <laughs> <laughs> it lay you down. <laughs> <laughs> like a bus. Yeah. <laughs> Transportation. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Kristen Martin from The Hollywood Reporter. I have a question for Cher. So you talked about how there's this gap being bridged between uh, fashion magazines and Hollywood. And I know you've kind of worked in both settings. So how have you personally contributed to bridging that gap? I mean, for me, I just always loved fashion, so I didn't really care what aspect of it was. Anyone that in, was wanted to be creative and embrace what was going on in fashion, I loved. But as a stylist, I think it's important to do editorial and, have, and be creative and, and red carpet to see it in real life, you know what I mean? And to pair it with the right people. I think, because what used to happen was that LA was Hollywood styling, and there was a formula, you had the matching handbag and the matching shoe, and da-da-da. And then all the cool kids were in New York doing editorial, but it's because of Instagram, because of social media, it's almost like the red carpet now is a bit like editorial, for all the reasons we're talking about, you know, pop stars and vintage movie. It's a, 
it's it's still expression, and you find a great actress that's willing to go there, and great designers that can make these clothes, and your dreams are coming true too, you know. Um, but you need the balance, you know. You need to be able to see both as a as someone that really just loves fashion and being creative, or you or you do personal shopping, which is a different thing, you know. There's, there's so many parts to fashion. Yeah. Any more questions? Okay, well, I think we're going <laughs> to stop there and say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.